Stop guessing and learn how to quickly find the very best selling products on Etsy right now. Set your Etsy store on the fast track with ideas you know are going to sell well. Let's see how. I'm Jess at Insights by Jess. I dig deep into what makes Etsy store successful and where they can improve so that you get the full 411 on what's really selling and why. Let's jump in. Okay, guys, I am finally able to make this video that you guys have been asking me for this whole time. It took me forever to put this together, so I really hope you'll love it and I hope you find it to be super, super helpful. So, we are going to go through the process today of finding a best-selling item or a best-selling niche. So this is a long process. Grab your notebook and pen, paper, all of that good stuff so you can take notes or save this video so you can come back to it later. It is a little bit of a long one. The first thing you need to do to find a best-selling item or niche is to have an idea of what you want to sell. So if you're not sure what you want to sell yet, if you're just now starting and you're brainstorming ideas, make sure you go to my resources link in the video description below and grab my Is This a Winning Product Freebie. Free freebie. <laughs> it is going to help you brainstorm some great ideas of things to sell based on your interests and your passions and really narrow that down. Once you know what you want to sell or you have a few great ideas to kind of consider, you are going to want to go to Etsy.com and that brings us to step two. Search that product idea into the main search bar on Etsy itself. So let's say I was trying to sell a dinosaur shirt, right? If I'm trying to scroll down here, if I'm trying to sell a design that is a single person design, so like one single shirt for one single person, I'm probably not going to look too much at family shirts like this. If I am trying to sell family shirts like this, you're probably not going to want to look too much at single shirts like this. So you do want to find search results that do match fairly closely the type of item that you're wanting to sell or that you're thinking of selling or already selling and doing research on. So let's take a look at these search results. You're going to want to skip the ads. So if you look, going back towards the top here, this entire row says ad by Etsy seller. I do not want to look at these results because those sellers paid to show up there. They did not necessarily get there because they were high ranking items. They got there because they were paid and they may be great selling items, but for the sake of finding items that are ranking naturally and doing well naturally, we're definitely going to want to avoid using ads as our search results. And those items will likely pop up in our search results anyways as we scroll down further. So you'll see those kinds of things pop up anyways on their own that are not ads. So as a general rule, try to avoid the ads. What you're going to look at when you're looking at these search results is how many reviews each shop has. And you're going to know that by looking at the number next to the stars. So you can see that this store has 1700 reviews, but this store only has 28 reviews. So you're going to find the products in the search results that have the highest number of reviews. So for example, I'm not going to click on this one because they only have 28. They're probably a very, very, very new seller. But this one here that has 9,600 reviews, that's a great one to click on. So I'm going to go ahead and open that in a new tab. And the reason you do that in a new tab is because you're going to want to come back to that search page. So open it in a new tab and take a look at that particular listing. So 
as a little tip here, I'm going to throw a quick tip in here. According to my stats and the research that I've done so far on Etsy sellers and Etsy reviews, approximately 5 to 15% of buyers will actually take the time to leave a review on Etsy. So you're going to want to remember that when you're looking at these numbers. And this is going to be different for every store, of course, but as a general rule of thumb, you can think that if an item has about five reviews, it's potentially sold somewhere between 25 and 30 times. So that's just a good estimate to use as you're looking at all of these different things that we're going to be exploring today. So for the purposes of market research, 10% is a good number to use in terms of how many people will actually buy something and then leave a review. So we're looking for the listings in our search results that have the highest number of reviews. And you can go ahead and open a few different ones because you want to compile as much information as possible. So this is where the math gets involved. And for this, I'm going to be using my Etsy sellers ultimate success workbook. I do sell this. This is in my resources section of my shop. Um, or of my website, you can check this out. It's I try to keep it fairly affordable because I know that when you are a new Etsy seller, money can be pretty tight. So I do try to keep it reasonably priced, but you do not need this. You can open up a Google spreadsheet. You can do this yourself or grab a piece of paper, a pen and a calculator. You can do all of these things today in this video yourself for free on a website or on a spreadsheet. So for me, I like to use this workbook. That's what I made it for was to help me do my research and all of the math is done automatically. So the next thing that we're going to be looking at here is how many product reviews does the listing have? So we're going to go here to this first one and we are going to scroll down just a little bit. You can see that this particular item has 22 reviews and the total reviews for the shop is 9,675. And this is just their reviews. So this was the number we saw when we looked on the results here. We saw that 9,675. But their actual sales are 43,413. So they have a lot more sales than they have reviews. And that's going to be important in just a second. So what we're looking at is to see how successfully this product is or is not selling. So we're going to focus on these reviews for a second here. And step three of this process is to examine these reviews. We're going to click most recent here and we're going to see when is their oldest review. So this product, the oldest review is September of 2022. So this has only been up here for six months, not even like four months, five months, maybe I can't do math in the morning, but we can tell that it's already a pretty popular product because it's sitting in 18 people's carts and they've got 22 reviews on it already. So they've probably sold this at least a hundred times in the last six months or five, four, five, let's count. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to get some coffee after I film this video. So September, October, November, December, January. So five months. So that's a pretty good number of sales for a brand new item. Now, if this is a new item, you may not see a lot of reviews. You may not see any reviews for this item. Actually, you may only see five or two, or this might not even be here. It might just only give you the reviews for the shop. If it only gives you reviews for the shop, I want you to look briefly down the list of reviews. It will tell you what the product was. So I'm going to go here. It will tell you the different products that they've ordered. You want to make sure that none of them actually match this product because if there's only a couple reviews, they might not categorize it by itself yet and it might be just bundled in with the rest of their reviews. So that doesn't mean that it didn't sell or didn't get a review. It just means it didn't get enough for Etsy to give it its own category. So do pay attention to that as well. 
However, if it doesn't have its own category and it's not a brand new listing, it's probably not selling very well. So if you see any that are not selling well, or if you go to this most recent and you look at when their last review is, if it's been a long time since their last review, like let's say it's been six months or a year since they've last sold one of these items, it's not selling very well. In cases like that, you would just move on to the next listing, but we'll get more to that in a minute. <clears throat> but because this one is selling fairly well, we're going to continue with this particular listing. And the next step, step four, is to see how profitable this item actually is and to see if it's really worth our time. It can be hard when we're just looking at this to say, oh, 22 reviews, okay, yes, that's a good seller. So what we're gonna do then is just do a little bit of math and see if it is in fact a good seller or not. And that is going to be subjective depending on your goals. I do want to point that out. Some people will only want to move forward with an idea if it's going to build them a six-figure store. Other people are looking for more of a part-time idea, maybe something they can do in their free time or something that's going to build slower, more steady, solid sales and can take a lot more time to kind of build momentum on so they may not be looking for something that has a massive amount of sales right off the bat. This is totally subjective to you and your personal goals. So starting with the listings that you felt had enough reviews, we're going to fill in this workbook or fill in your spreadsheet. Now I'm actually going to go to the competitor research tab of my workbook and I'm going to fill in a couple key bits of information. So the first thing that I'm going to want to fill in is I'm going to copy and paste the product title. Oops. So if you accidentally do this on any Google spreadsheet, you can just control Z to undo it and then hold shift control V and it will paste it in there very nicely. So just as a side note, Google sheets tip for you. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the URL and I'm going to paste that in here. And the reason I'm saving these two bits of information is because I may want to keep this information for competitor research later. And by taking an extra 10 seconds to do that now, I'm not going to be searching through Etsy all over again trying to find these items. So it just saves me time in the future. Now here's where we get to the important stuff. We're going to want to write down the item's price. So this is obviously not selling for $8. If you've seen some of my t-shirt reviews before, you know that they can be a little bit misleading on the sizes. So what I'm going to do is just scroll through here and kind of look. What is the most common sizes? So like youth is $13. Um, a unisex adult t-shirt is... 13 to 20 dollars a large is 16 seven, almost 17 dollars so that's a pretty fair price their most expensive option here is 20 almost 24 dollars and obviously their cheapest option is eight so i feel like 16 or 17 is a fair guesstimate for an average price for this product i'm going to also look at the shipping because that matters too. And this particular item is free to ship. So on my workbook or on your spreadsheet, you are going to want to enter that information in here. So if this is shipping, it would add it to your final price. Since this is free shipping, I just put zero. Now here's where it starts to do some fancy math. I'm going to put in the sales count for the entire shop in the next column. <clears throat> And I'm getting over a cold, so if you hear me clearing my throat, I apologize. It is annoying. I'm sorry. So I've got the total sales amount. Copy and paste it in there. And then the next is your total shop reviews. So that is going to be this number right here, 96.75. Oops. And then it wants to know how many total product reviews are there. And for this particular item, there is 22 product reviews. Now, this is where it can get tricky. This particular seller might have this listed three times with different images. 
They may or they may not. We're going to search their store for Pocket Dinosaur. And nothing popped up. Interesting. Okay, let's just type Dino. Hmm. This is the right store. Printosphere. We have discovered an Etsy glitch, y'all, because this says Pocket Dinosaur. Maybe I have to type dinosaur. Wow. Okay, so we have actually, that is not an Etsy glitch. That is an oversight. They did not include dino. They have dinosaur. One, two, three, four, five, six times. And they should have typed in at least once in that title. Interesting. Okay, anyways, there's only one. They only have this pocket shirt once, so we're only going to include it once. But we just basically went through that whole process so that you could see how this number of total product reviews can change depending on if they have duplicated listings or not. It is a very common technique for sellers to duplicate their listings and use a different image because different buyers will be attracted to different images. Even though this listing offers a t-shirt and this offers a t-shirt, etc., the person looking for a t-shirt might only click on this one. The person looking for a sweater might only click on this one. So it's important for you to keep that in mind when you're doing your competitor research. Okay, so we've got these three bits of information and we've got the price. What we're going to look at is the potential product earnings. So we can say that this product has potentially made the store 16, almost $1,700 so far since they've started selling this item. And that's just going by the total shop reviews that they've gotten compared to how many sales. So it's taking a sales to review ratio and it's applying that same sales to review ratio here. And I know that is some complicated math. So I'm going to walk that, walk you through that in just a second in case you're doing this on your own spreadsheet. But there's one more step. So before I really walk you through it, I'm going to do the final, final step. <clears throat> so now we're going to account for how old is this product. So we're going to come back here and we're going to look again at the oldest review for this particular item, which was September 26th, 2022. So we're going to write 9, 26, 22, and we can see that the potential earnings per year for this product is $5,000 a year. So because it's a brand new item and it's only been selling for five months, it takes these sales and it basically calculates them. <clears throat> so basically what this is calculating is how much has it sold? How long has it been selling for? And if you split those, split this by the number of months, the total number of months it's been selling for, it would make about this much money if it sells for 12 months for a, an entire year. So an older item, for example, would have a lower potential earnings per year because it's obviously sell, only accrued this many reviews in a longer period of time. So that's why that's important. Now, if you're doing this on a spreadsheet and you're going to be trying to figure this out for yourself, let me walk you really quickly through that math. So the first thing you're going to want to do, divide the total amount of shop reviews by their total sales. You are going to write that number down somewhere. So I'm going to do that over here on the side for you. So total shop reviews divided by the total amount of sales. And we've got a 0.22. So approximately 22% of this shops buyers have actually left a review, which is fantastic, actually. That's a great number, that's above average. The next step we're going to do, step two of this process, is to divide the number of listing reviews by this new number you've just got. So you're going to take the total product reviews, that 22 reviews, and divide it by this number right here. 
and that's going to tell you it is sold approximately 98 times, okay? Based on the percentage of their buyers that typically leave reviews. So the next number, I know this is a lot of math, I'm sorry. The next number we're going to try and figure out is how much money they've made on this product. So we're going to take how many times it's sold and multiply that by the price of the product. So we get that 1,678 number that you see right here. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty simple math. You can do that yourself with a calculator or on a spreadsheet. So if you're doing your research and you're looking at two stores that both have designs, so for example, looking at this one, it's only sold nine times and it has been selling since November of 2022, so a little bit less time than the other, but it's only nine times. We can safely say that this store, this shirt is selling for this store more often than this shirt is selling. This shirt has not sold as much and it probably does not make as much money as the first shirt. And that's why we look at multiple listings, okay? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. If you are using my workbook, then this is calculated for you and you can see pretty clearly how much money this product is making per year. You can kind of get an idea of, for your personal preferences, whether you feel like it's been selling enough or making enough money for you to want to try and create a similar item and enter this niche or enter this particular product idea space. If you're doing this on a spreadsheet yourself, this is a little bit more complicated and I can't really walk you through the exact math because mine uses a formula to do this automatically and I don't know, it, it's a pretty complicated formula. But to simplify the process for you, to make it a little bit more simple, what you're going to want to do is divide the total product earnings, the total potential product earnings, so this number here, by the number of years it's been selling. So we know that this has been selling, it's made 678 times, and we know that it's been selling for about a half of a year. So what we're going to do is take this number and divide it by the total number of years it's been selling, so one half, and it gives me a potential product earnings of 3,356. Now that's a different number, right? If I go here, this tells me my specific number tells me $5,000. This tells me $3,000. That's a pretty big difference. And that's because my formula goes down literally to the date and month and calculates a full year that way, whereas this is just kind of a guesstimate. So if it's been selling for four months, four months is a third of a year. Okay, so using a third of a year, it gives me a much more accurate estimate. That is a lot more complicated for you because you're gonna have to figure out how much of the year it's been selling if it's a brand new item. But if it's been selling, let's say it's been selling two years, you would just say divided by two years and you would get that number that way. So it really just depends on how long the item has been selling. And I know that's confusing and I'm sorry, but I did want to walk you through this math so that you can figure this out if you're doing this for yourself. So now that you know the estimated value of the item, you can decide if you like that number and if you want to move forward. Here we're going to come back to our search results and we're going to see how many of these listings we want to explore. So we already know we also have, this is a good, it says it's in 12 counts, it's 12 cards, it's probably a popular item. And we can use this as one of our examples too. So I can go ahead and copy and paste this information here and put it into my workbook. Oops and the URL and all of the pricing information and basically just fill it up. So as a general rule, you're going to want to look at at least five listings, no less than three, but generally about five as a 
baseline number because what might not be selling well for one shop could be a huge hit for another shop. So you don't want to rule out a potential product just because the first listing you find isn't doing well. You want to make sure you're getting an overall idea of how this type of product is selling on Etsy. And the only way to get an overall idea is to look at multiple listings. If you look at a few listings and you see that it's not really selling very well for any of the listings, then you know that that's not a great idea and you can move on to something else and start exploring something, another idea that may be more of a better seller. But if you're going through this process and you're seeing that some of these are selling well and some of these are selling better than others, then that's giving you a good idea of which competitors you want to look at in terms of research. So when you're starting to explore things like what titles and tags and keywords to include, what description elements to include and all of that good stuff, you're going to want to look at those sellers that are selling better than others because what they are doing is working. So that's always helpful to keep in mind. And that is also another reason why I have this information here in your competitor research, because then when you go to do your keyword research, you can just quickly click through those good selling listings, those best selling listings, and really get that information quickly. Definitely shoot for at least five, but if you can do 10, do 10 because the more listings you evaluate, the better of an overall idea you're going to get of how this product sells on Etsy in general. So if your idea has a good number of reviews and it's selling well, it's a popular selling product, and you like the number of potential earnings that it's making, you might want to consider selling this product, which is fantastic. That means you can move to the next phases, right? However, there are a couple of other factors you're going to want to consider before you decide on the product to sell. These are going to be things like what your profit margin is for that product or that niche, because some products will have a better profit margin than others. And I'm going to be making a whole separate video on how to evaluate profits because profits can be super specific to what you're selling, what your niche is, where your supplies come from, and all of those kinds of things. The profits discovery process on a digital download, for example, is completely different than a supply product or a print on demand product. So that's a whole separate video. That's going to be a long one. But as a general rule, you can typically find out the cost of an item or the cost of supplies you need to make an item with a little bit of Google research. And then you can come back over to my workbook and use the pricing and profits page to calculate these costs. So down here, you can enter all of the different material costs for an item, or if it's print on demand, that makes things a little bit simpler. If it's um, a digital design, obviously you're not going to have any materials costs, but you might actually have design program costs. So you can just kind of factor those things in and then it'll factor in your selling fees and all of that good stuff. If you don't have this workbook, please take a spreadsheet take the time to break down what it's going to cost you to sell something and how much you can charge for that. If you fill out your spreadsheet and you see that all of your 10 competitors are selling this for an average price of 15 to 20 dollars, then you know you're not going to be able to come and charge 25 dollars for your product because probably a buyer is going to go to one of these other ones that are selling for cheaper. So that puts your price at about $18, $17-$18. When you're going and you're researching the cost of making a shirt, if you're printing it yourself or if you're using Printify or a print-on-demand supplier, you can find out how much that's going to cost you. If it costs you $13 to make and ship a shirt to a customer and you're charging $17 or $18, then you know what your profit margin is and you can figure that out on a spreadsheet. And that's generally what you're going to want to look at when you're looking for best selling items. So you want to go through this whole process of looking at these listings and evaluating what their reviews look like, 
what their sales volume looks like and how much money they're making on these particular items. If you're looking for a product niche instead of a specific item, so let's say you're just looking at t-shirts in general instead of a specific dinosaur shirt, or let's say you're looking at selling jewelry supplies in general instead of a specific mala beads supplies or something along those lines, that's a little bit of a simpler process. You will still need to search Etsy to find stores and listings that have the most sales. But instead of looking for specific products and evaluating the specific products with this information here, it gets a little bit simpler. So in that case, I'm going to come back to this listing and I'm going to look at their main store, right? We know that they have 43,414 sales, but instead of looking to see how well one particular listing is doing, we're going to look to see how their store is doing overall. And you see me do this pretty quickly on all of my review videos, but you can also do this for yourself on a spreadsheet or if you have my workbook, I have put the same calculator that I use right down here on this competitor research tab. So what you're essentially going to do is take that number of sales here and I'm going to copy and paste because I have a love hate relationship with my keyboard here. You're going to want to take your average product price and to find that what you're going to want to do is scroll down to their feedback. You're going to want to go to most recent and you're going to want to look through a few pages of their feedback and see what designs you see popping up a lot. So scrolling through here, you can see they actually have a pretty good variety of designs here. You're not really seeing one thing pop up multiple times. That comes up a couple times. They have a lot of different designs. And just go through three or four pages here and see what is popular, what is selling well, and just open a few of them in different tabs here. So this is actually a sweatshirt, not a t-shirt. So you're gonna wanna open these up and if it looks like they're selling well, you can go ahead and uh, like take a peek at how much this costs. So this is also right along the lines of $17. Looking at this one, this is a bestseller, so that's good to know. This one is also right around $17. Another one. So $17 is about average for this price. So I don't need to really look at 5,000 listings. I can just say that their average price is $17. Now I'm going to want to know what their oldest date of feedback is for their whole store. How old is their entire store? Because that's going to tell me how much money this store is making per year. So I'm going to go back to most recent, scroll all the way down here and go to the last page of their feedback. And you see me do this on all the videos. It's the same process. So their oldest review is February 8th. I didn't even look at the year of 2021. So this is actually a pretty new store here. And this is today's date. You can change the date if you want. It's automatically set up in my workbook for today's date. And that tells you that their average annual sales is $370,000 for this store. If you're doing this process yourself, you're not on my spreadsheet, but you have your own spreadsheet, let's do a little bit of math. So if you've already, if you want to skip ahead, just double tap on the right side of the screen and skip this part. But you're basically going to want to write down all of the same information. So how many sales they have times their average product price and then you're going to want to <clears throat> figure out how many years they've been selling. So before we figure that out, if they have an average product price, let's say they had 
they weren't all $17. Let's say some of their products were $5 and some of their products were $15. You could figure out their average product price by adding five plus 15 divided by two items. Their average product price is $10 an item or $10 per cart. I really need more coffee. So <clears throat> you know that their average product price is $10. Let's take a peek at the math on how old their store is or how long they've been selling. So this is going to be more of a general number, kind of like how when we did the math ourselves on the particular item was, for the store, it's also going to be a little bit more general. So we can see that this store has been selling almost exactly two years, actually. So we're going to take this number. This is how much money their store has made on average. And remember that these are all estimates. This is not exact math. We are guessing at how much money the store is making based on the information provided by Etsy. So it is still just a guess. We're going to take that number, we're going to divide that by two years, and we can see that they have, if I give this a little dollar symbol here, 366, almost $367,000 per year. So it's pretty close to my number. It gets a little bit less close if it's not so close to the year. So let's say they've been selling since June you are going to want to be as precise as you can here. So instead of having two years, they now have about a year and a half. So you would type in 1.5. And you can see here that the estimate is not quite as exact. So you do want to be as close when you're calculating this number as you can in order to get a pretty close estimate. But honestly, if you're seeing oh they make four hundred and eighty nine thousand dollars that's really not that big of a difference in an estimate as four hundred and forty two thousand dollars you know those are good numbers and you know that they're probably selling pretty darn well so that is quite a good number <clears throat> so it really just boils down to how precise you want your numbers to be when you are examining ideas like this you don't need to be as specific and as precise because you're just trying to get a general idea of how well something is selling you're not doing their accounting you're not filing their taxes so it doesn't really matter if you're a little bit off you're just trying to gauge the amount of success that a particular store has or that a particular product has in general so that's the general process that's the basic process that I walk through and you can spend as much time doing this research as you like when you're looking for a particular design or a particular product like with the dinosaur shirt and I say find 10 different listings the process for stores is very similar you're going to want to find as many stores as you can that are selling well you're going to want to get a great overview of what that niche looks like so if you're thinking of selling spreadsheets for example this would be the exact same process you're going to want to look down and see which ones sell the most this one has 2100 reviews this one only has 16 so you're not going to really look at this one here you're going to look at ones with the higher numbers so this one has 4300 reviews you're definitely going to want to take a look and see what this seller is selling and what they're making on them on these particular spreadsheets and I do want to point out that this is Hayes Creative and I did do a video on that store. So make sure you check that out. It is part of my 21 digital products video. It's a huge video. Super awesome. Check that out if you haven't seen it. So this is my general process of how I find best selling items. And when I am looking for stores to review, this is generally the process that I go through to find those stores. There are a couple things that I do consider when I am reviewing a store for you guys or for a video, because I want to not only find the best selling stores, but I also want to find stores that I think are doing things that either I can 
tell you guys about and give you guys tips for or things to avoid or something like that I do try to make sure that there's something that you can learn from that particular store as opposed to just throwing up best-selling stores with you know like great SEO and great everything all the time I don't think that that's gonna have a lot of value because you can go on Etsy and find those for yourself but this is my basic process and it's really just a more in-depth version of my process for evaluating and fixing your existing listings that aren't selling very well. And if you have not seen that video, you should definitely check that out here. It is very, very valuable to help you build your sales and get things rolling on your existing products. But if you're in the early stages of deciding what to sell, make sure you check out this hilariously fun print on demand idea that makes a quarter of a million dollars on just a handful of listings. Watch that one here.